waiting for the air conditioner to kick off. I'm not going to count backwards. It should just be a few seconds here. Um, can a man enter his mother's womb a second time to be born? Remember who said that, right? Nicodemus, when he came to Jesus. In the book of Job, we see this. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return. Hmm. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In the NIV that reads, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. But there's a footnote and it says, or will return there. It's interesting, Job says something very similar to what Nicodemus says. Can you figure it out? Think about it. When we were naked, we were without sin. It wasn't until we sinned, once we knew what good and evil were, that we then required flesh, skins, something to give us feeling, uh, maybe so that we can have compassion. <clears throat> and this is what Jesus meant when he said, unless you drink my blood and eat my flesh, in other words, to say, unless you understand what the flesh is for, that when you're weak, then you are strong. Uh, so as to say, ouch, don't do that. Ouch, don't do that to me. Let's take a look at John. Um, So, John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. So, when we uh, think of those words, what John said, in the beginning was the Word. And so, we have to reconcile how was it that Jesus was with God. And Jesus was with God by being led by God's Spirit. By God's words. In other words, God's Spirit was obviously always with him. I am that I am. In the beginning. Pardon me. So, in Genesis, we see that there's two visible entities and one that kind of isn't there. We see God, Elohim which means many. And then we've got Lord God, which is Yahweh Elohim. The one and the many. And who is missing? The Lord. So as the word the Word, then, is the center portion, the dividing line between these two. Because you've got God, who created man, and man was created androgynous, all in one unit. 
male and female, made them he. Doesn't mean male and female, God made them, although he did. Male and female made them he, as in a man, as in Adam. And so that means that the woman is then inside. Lord God, in Genesis, forms man. Creating and forming. You want to believe that those two things are the same, but they're really not. As we head into Isaiah 45, 7, there's a big difference between forming and making and creating. So what we see in Isaiah 45, 7, the verse reads, I form light and I create darkness. There's a little bit of difference between light and darkness there. And one is formed, one is created. I make peace and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. So, what we immediately see is that while God creates everything, and it's good, Lord God is capable of either. This is the part of God that makes all the decisions. This is where the Word exists and God's law, which is a blessing and a curse. Ultimately, everything is reconciled to God, redeemed, whatever it is. When the universe was created, uh, formed, made by God, everything was all planned out from the very beginning the very foundation. All the laws were in place. Everything that was to be was thought of and known. And so through that word, his thoughts, everything that can be made will be made. So it's hard to reconcile or accept the idea that God has anything to do with evil. And we can even see that as we start to read subsequent translations uh, stemming from the Hebrew. They dumb down that word and only because it's misunderstood as to what it means. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And what do we see is the immediate clock. What do we see as the immediate condition of the, of the creation? Darkness, unformed, formless. But we know if we read Isaiah, it says that God didn't create the world without an intention, without a purpose for it. So the best way to look at evil is being the very first step before you form and make it. Before the works that are required to make it what it should be. We even see this in Genesis on the first Sabbath when God rests from all he made and created. Two forces working together. So we have a predicament then, because to fight evil is repaying evil with the evil. And since evil is just the beginning of what will be, if you repay evil with evil, you're sowing more evil. You're just creating more of it. Um, it's like getting frustrated over building something and you decide, eh, I'll just wreck it and, and start over again. 
but you never get to the point where it's ever finished because you're frustrated and you just keep breaking it over and over and over. And that's what the world is doing to itself. Because we think it's okay to repay evil with evil, which just results in another bunch of evil to be dealt with. We even see this with Cain. Um, Cain said, whoever finds me will kill me. And God said, not so. Whoever kills you, I'm going to hit him seven times. And that's that number of completion. But we have this predicament then. What do we do with evil? How do we approach it? How do we consider what it's for and what we do with it? Evil is actually opportunity if you can believe it. Not opportunity to destroy it, but opportunity to show God's love. Jesus made it clear we're to feed our enemies, clothe our enemies, love our enemies. Whatever you do to the least of these, you've done it to me. He wasn't talking about children because we don't see children, when you see children in prison. As far as hungry, hungry for the word, Thirsty, maybe needing some water. But the, what we see is in the book of Job, where his wife, uh, she's kind of had it, I guess, that he's, uh, he's pretty beat up, I guess, right? And what does she say? Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. And that's how Job was blameless. Didn't mean that he never sinned. He just accepted both good and evil and didn't blame God for it. I don't know if he understood that it was an opportunity uh, in much the same way that um, Joseph did. Joseph was mistreated in one of the most treacherous ways, thrown into a pit by his brothers to die. Had it not been for a caravan coming along for him to be sold into slavery, Joseph then knew that he would never have had the opportunity to save so many people. And that's where forgiveness comes from. Forgiveness comes from the idea of understanding how it is that God's working and how he's using these spiritual forces uh, for our benefit. But Job says in 2.10, You speak as one of the foolish women. Shall we not accept both good and evil from God? And in saying this, Job did not sin with his lips. Um, so, when we talk about spiritual forces... Um, we have to bring in the idea of sons of God um, because we believe that God only has one son. And yet in so many places in Scripture we're told uh, that you are all sons of uh, God, sons of the Most High. Paul says in Romans 8.14, those who are led by the Spirit, are sons of God. Here's our predicament. God has many sons. And we can see that in Psalm 82, 6, where God says, you're sons of God, all of you, sons of the Most High. And if you read further into that verse, though, you're going to see that these particular sons, plural, that he's talking about, they defiled themselves with women. And God wasn't happy about that. Notice that Paul in this verse does not say those led by the Holy Spirit. It leaves it open that when you're, we're all led by the Spirit. There are spiritual forces all around us right now. But if I was to say that, if you were led by the Spirit, 
that you are a son of God, then I'd ask you what spirit is leading you. The one, God's Holy Spirit, or the many? And it kind of doesn't matter which one uh, you are being led by, because in the end, it's the Lord who will judge you. The Word of God. God's law is given to us as both a blessing and a curse. If you obey it, you receive the blessing. If you rebel against it, and it's a law that cannot be broken, but if you rebel against God's law, then what you can expect is to receive the curse. So, sorry, I'm going to laugh now because I just said so. You reap whatever it is that you sow. If you sow seeds of love and nurturing and caring, trusting in God's Word, that the wages that He promises will be paid back to you, then you'll know good. That's called fear of God. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. But fear is actually the beginning of any wisdom. Because if you fear something other than God, then that is sin. And if you fear something other than God, then what God will do is unindate you with your fears. How did Job put it? What I have feared has come upon me. So, to fear anything except for God, and Jesus said that, fear him who can, you know, cast your soul into hell and so on, Who was he talking about? Was he talking about God casting your soul into hell? Or was he talking about Satan taking the opportunity that you're giving him to cast your soul into hell? We have choices to make. That woman that exists inside of all of us is that choice. That is the seed of the woman. And it's a virgin birth because it doesn't require any physical contact with God. But His Spirit does come upon us. And He also sends evil spirits to harden the hearts of those who are bound and intent on doing evil. He did it to Pharaoh. He did it to Saul. He even had a consult with them before he sent them to take out King Ahab at Ramoth Gilead. It's quite the meaning, actually. Because we would say that God is not the author of evil, and that's true. So what does God do? He consults with the evil spirits. And because he can't author the situation, he backs off and says, uh, who will go? And the spirits conferred amongst each other, and one said this, and another said that. And finally, one stepped forward and said, I will go, I will do it. And then God, because he's not the author of evil, had to ask, hmm, well, how will you do it? And he said, I will put a lying tongue in the mouths of King Ahab's prophets and cause him to go to battle at Ramoth Gilead, where he will fall. But what God does know is everything. And at that point, he knew that that spirit was being obedient, that that spirit was going to do exactly what it said it was going to do. And so he dispatched that spirit and said, Go, you'll be successful. You are a son of God. What are you going to do with that today? <laughs>